All right, let's do an echoey video. So this popped up in my YouTube feed, so I watched it. It's uh, how to make your own engine headers. And after I watched this, I went and looked at some of the comments. One comment or question is asked over and over and over again, and the answer is the same thing. In your opinion, if you have to compromise for packaging, is it more important to have equal length primaries or a stranger section right after the exhaust port? Okay, and this isn't the question I wanted to read. <laughs> so hold on. Uh, it's this one. I was always told that all the tubes must be the same length between the flange and the collector. Is that not true? It depends on your application. For racing at constant RPM, yes, it's better to have equal tube headers. For other applications that RPM varies constantly, it's better to have different lengths. This is very important because he also says for drag racing, you want it to set to a constant RT RPM. What are we doing? We're taking off at a constant RPM, and we want all of our power to be provided there because once we throttle back, the, unless you have an IVO prop, the propeller can't take advantage of the uh, available RPM. It's always got a gap. So we don't need any kind of uh, enhanced uh, tuning that helps with the volumetric efficiency like we have a mini turbocharger. We only want it at 4800 or whatever our takeoff RPM is. That's where we want the tune to be. That's pretty important because it gets into whether uh, those uh, primary tubes should go into a collector where the two cylinders are collected. Okay? And I've maintained we do not want this engine to have a common collector. We want two pipes, one for each cylinder, no intermixing. And this pretty much backs up what I'm saying in my mind. We've got a V-twin that's 90 degrees apart and the cylinders are out of phase. So if this one fires, this one's exhausting. So it goes fire, exhaust, exhaust, fire, fire, exhaust, exhaust, fire. Hopefully you're seeing my mouse screwing circles all over mother ass. I stop. I'll do it again just in case. Number one cylinder, okay? Fire, exhaust, exhaust, fire, fire, exhaust, exhaust, fire. Got it? So if we have one pipe leaving each cylinder and it's tuned, both of them will be the same length because the cylinders, you know, are the same. But they won't intermix. There's no collector. Then when the uh, supersonic pulse happens to come back and act like a mini turbocharger at 4,800 RPM and help suck the uh, air and fuel mixture through the cylinder when, they, when the cam valves, valves are overlapped on intake and exhaust. That acts like a mini turbocharger. It clears all the excess stuff out of the uh, cylinder and brings a little charge in. So we can actually, uh, instead of the cylinder only having 85% of its uh, 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 area being filled, we can get 100, 110, 115 more. It depends on the valve overlap and the duration. Um, now, if we have one collector that these two pipes go into, the theory everybody promotes is it's better because as you, uh, let's say you tune it for 4,800 and the engine, it's a 180 degree opposed, not this engine, but 180 degree opposed like a boxer. Then at half RPM, it's possible for the um, pulse from this cylinder to affect the opposing cylinder and help it. Oh, that's great. So at 2,400 RPM, we'll say, Cylinder 2 helps Cylinder 1. Well, that's great, but we have a problem. Ours are not in a 180 degree, 360 degree, or 720 degree uh, thing. They're in 90, okay? This is going to create a big problem if you use a collector on these two pipes. Here's what's going to happen, in my estimation, in my understanding. Uh, you slow this engine down, and suddenly Cylinder 1 helps Cylinder 2, but it does it at, uh, let's say, 2,700 RPM. Cylinder 2 is getting a real nice boost now. It's got 115% volumetric efficiency. It just generated a whole bunch more horsepower. This one didn't. Now we got a huge vibration going on. Then you change it to, let's say, I don't know the numbers, but let's say it's a 3,750 RPM, and now the reverse happens. This cylinder helps this cylinder. Same thing. This explains why some people that have these engines have uh, particular RPM ranges where they have huge vibrations, and they can't figure it out. It's because they ran the two pipes into one collector. These pipes have to be maintained separate because we have a 90 degree or on a Harley Davidson 70 degree, whatever it is. You do not want those pipes cross feeding back into each other because you're going to end up with one cylinder at some RPM getting a really nice boost pressure, okay, and the other one's not, and then vice versa, okay? So uh, I, I think, you know, after watching this and reading these comments, it dawned on me, yeah, we do not want these pipes going into a common collector. They have to be maintained separately. They'll be exactly the same length, and for our, um, oh, what the hell is our thing we have to put in there, our probe, 
I can't remember our exhaust probe for the EFI. It'll go in one or the other. We pick one and we have one. Okay, I can't remember the damn sensor now. Uh, but anyhow, it's uh, you know for the the air, uh, for the oxygen the oxygen sensor. We'll pick one of these, put the oxygen sensor in it. The other one won't have an oxygen sensor. It doesn't need it because they should be running the same thing. Okay, so anyhow, if anybody disagrees with what I'm saying here, let me know on why because I still maintain that a 90 degrees out of phase engine cannot have a common collector between the header pipes. Okay, so this engine is uh, got a tuned pipe on it for 4,800 RPM for maximum power for maximum takeoff, okay? And we look at the volumetric efficiency over here, third from the right, and we see it's like in the 60s, 70s, 90s, and it gets over 100%. This is because of the tuned pipe, okay? It's helping to bring in charge during the valve overlap of the camshaft. If we had no overlap in the camshaft, that tuned pipe, you might as well forget it. It ain't going to do anything at all. You have to have overlap in the camshaft between the intake and exhaust valve. And uh, the more overlap you have, the better. If you have a turbocharger or a supercharger, you don't want hardly any overlap because you'll just be blowing your stuff right out of the pipe and losing pressure. Uh, so let me get a, a, a drawing tool. Let me get red pencil, red, thick. So I've got it tuned. Uh, we're looking at the volumetric stuff right here, okay? And so I've got it tuned like here. And then we can see it kind of helps through here. And we don't have the next uh, horsepower ranges, but it's also helping here where we're not running, okay? So, you know, it's got a little curve, all right? So if we uh, have this pipe tuned and we have a collector on it on a 90 degree V twin, there are going to be times at lower than 4,800 RPMs where one cylinder helps the other one. It may not be uh, the full amount of help, but it could be some level of help, okay? And that's where we run into a problem if we're running a, a collector between these two pipes because suddenly cylinder one helps cylinder two have better volumetric efficiency at, we'll say, 3,900 RPM. So cylinder two has, uh, you know, 99 instead of 97%. Well, what's that mean? It's going to put out more horsepower. What's it going to do? It's going <clears> to <throat> cause the engine to, uh, you know, equal and opposite reactions, okay? The, the engine, when it fires, is going to have more power and rotate and torque more and the uh, plane is going to torque the other direction but then when the next uh, cylinder fires it's going to be not even the same it's going to be less because that one's not getting advantage of the collector stuff because they're not 180 degrees diametrically opposed cylinders they're 90. so that explains why some people are going to have uh you know vibrations in their engine at this rpm and the massive vibration at this rpm is because you're running their pipes into a common collector on a non you know diametrically opposed engine and that pulse is coming back up one well it goes up both of the pipes but it can only work where there's a overlap in the valves at that timing okay and uh because they're not uh diametrically opposed then when the next cylinder fires it can't help the other cylinder it hits a uh, closed intake valves and goes i can't do anything with that so you end up with a massive vibration here and a massive vibration here and you can't ever figure out why just don't run there you know run above and below that but you're irritated because you're like, oh, well, that's my best cruise speed, but I can't use it because it vibrates like hell. That's because you took these two header pipes into a common collector and screwed the engine up. They've got to be separated. Okay, so.